Guys, the queen Stevie Nicks herself has entered the chat. Also, more kids and skeletons, this time at a reservoir. I just love internet trends that bring people together. There's no bones about it. Say I'm dead inside. I'm dead inside. The real TV host Jeannie Mai lit social media on fire when she said she wants to submit to her husband. Sean Mendez is coming to the small screen. Gal Gadot admits she messed up big time with that viral Imagine video. And Megan the Stallion wrote an op-ed about expectations of black female voters and why they're under attack. I'm Alex Clark and this is Politics. Real quick, I just gotta tell you two stories that made me LOL. Oh my God, that was so funny! <laughs> Justin Bieber is releasing a new song tomorrow with Jacob Tremblay called Lonely, but when I read the headline, for some reason, I dead ass thought this said Justin Bieber and Justin Trudeau have a new song coming out. <laughs> Remember when Trudeau was bootleg Aladdin for Halloween? I gotta be smooth, cool. Confident. Speaking of racist hypocrites, some idiot thought it would be a good idea to give Jesse Smollett his directorial debut for some movie I don't care about. Do you think he'll get his two Nigerian actor friends to play the leads or not? Nah? Oh. Oh, yeah, that. Man, that was so long ago. Um. Moving on to the spicier and saucier, Jeannie Mai from The Real has people shook because she said she wants to submit to her fiance Jeezy when they get married. What I've really learned in my life for my definition of marriage, I'm not saying what I want works for everybody. I'm saying for me, right. I'm a very dominant woman. I own my business. I lead my teams. I played my own manager, my own publicist, my own lawyer when yeah. I didn't have money to have those people. So I make the decisions in my life. When I come home, I, am a, I, I like the idea that my man leads us. That doesn't mean that in this case, Jay makes all the decisions for us. That doesn't mean that when he says, how are we spending our money or where are we moving, that I just say, yes, sir, or yes, your, your honor. Like, it's not that. It's a, you know what? I think that we would do best here. I want to do this. And he takes the decision. He formulates it with our yes. overall vision and he leads us. And I like to submit to that. I don't want to lead in our household and in our marriage. I want him to lead and I have all the essence of what I bring as a wife to make that decision, but that I love that my husband will be the man that leads. I'm just gonna put it out there. I feel like people that disagree with Jeannie on this didn't grow up with a strong male figure in the home who gave strong and loving male guidance. So then when they do meet a man who can actually lead them, they're on the defense and think, oh my gosh, he's controlling and sexist and embodies toxic masculinity, whatever that is. They're like super sexist. If you've never seen a man lead a household, then honestly, how would you know what being a healthy submissive wife looks like? When you allow your spouse to truly lead, what I've learned from my happily married friends is it doesn't mean that he dictates everything and you act like a little mouse. It means that you trust in his abilities to lead and have faith that at the end of the day, he will always put your family first. I want to be wife material. And if the words submissive wife still freaks you out, let me put it like this. Think of the hierarchy where you work. Charlie Kirk is the CEO of Turning Point USA, which is where I work. And even though he is the authority over all departments, Departments in this building, his subordinates still make decisions about their individual teams and different things going on in the company. But when we need guidance or are facing a tough decision, we can go to Charlie and defer to him, trusting that whatever he decides to do will be in the best interest for the organization and us as his employees. I have no patience for the lies that are being told. I fully stand with Jeannie Mai on this, and I think if more women got this concept, we'd see a complete 180 in marriages around the world. Will you marry me? There's nothing holding Shawn Mendes back from releasing a documentary about his life next month on Netflix. Little vampire boy should have just released it on Halloween and called it a day. Don't even try to tell me this kid's skin is not vampire sparkly. Blah. 
Rolling Stone is reporting that the documentary will be called In Wonder and drops on November 23rd. It's all part of the plan to promote Sean's fourth studio album, Wonder, that comes out December 4th. The music magazine says Wonder will follow Mendez's rise to stardom and is set to feature footage from his 2019 self-titled world tour. Ooh, do you think the doc will also include this exclusive footage? This could be one of my most unpopular opinions ever, but I am not a fan of Shawn Mendes. I love singing along to his songs in the car just because I feel like he's in my range, you know? You know what I mean? Sometimes there's an artist and you just cover them in the cars just super well. That's me with Dracula Boy. I mean, Shawn. Even though I don't mind his music, I cannot stand him as a person. And I know so many people who think he is the hottest thing to ever grace the earth, but this man cannot keep his beans from spilling. Every interview he does, he overshares. What's the last thing you do before you go on stage? Pee, like 10 times. I'm like really <laughs> like crazy no about it. I have this horrible thing that I'm gonna like have to pee so bad on stage. And so I like, I'll, it's like a running back and forth. I'm like, I look at my security guard and be like, is there a bathroom close? He's like, we have 30 seconds, man. And I mean, again, on the skin. I'm sorry, but I was always team Jacob, not Edward. Hello, biceps. In Swift, he's already know, but he has this weird need to bring up Taylor Swift every time he's speaking publicly for absolutely no reason, except to just ride her coattails. It just gives me majorly thirsty vibes. I'm an artist in the music industry, and I toured with her, and I met her, and I spoke with her. And I know her, and it's still, as a fan, like my heart was racing. And we can't forget him and Camila with their stupid zombie walks. And that's that on Sean Mendez. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. It's like hot potato, pass it on, pass it on. You don't know that song? No. Gal Gadot admitted that her freak show Imagine viral video from a few months back was a big mistake. Other breaking news, water. Wet. She told Vanity Fair, sometimes, you know, you try and do a good deed and it's just not the right good deed. I had nothing but good intentions and it came from the best place and I just wanted to send light and love to the world. Well, please don't do it anymore. Hey, you know what, guys? What's important is that she figured it out. Sometimes it doesn't happen overnight. Now, please don't ever do it again. Okay, let's not do that again, all right? Megan Thee Stallion is heating things up at the New York Times of all places with a new op-ed, random. Unexpected, but not as random and unexpected as this. Not a lot of rappers are putting pen to the newspaper, but I'm here for it, and it was very interesting. Lots I disagreed with, but I like exposing myself to opposing ideas. It's called learning. Check out what I learned today. <laughs> You're welcome. She covers the Tory Lane shooting a little bit, but mostly talks about feeling like black women are disrespected. One of the examples she gives that caught my eye is where she starts to talk about how black women are expected to deliver victory for certain political parties. It's a glaring red flag right in front of her face, and yet she doesn't see it yet. You don't owe anyone your vote. Make the politicians earn it. That's a red flag. Just ask Candace Owens. I know that she'd say the same thing. The fact that certain people tell black voters it's expected that they vote a certain way because of their skin color is wrong. You can vote for any candidate that you want to vote for. A candidate should show voters evidence that their policies have worked or will work. Prove it. Okay. Madam Stallion, the proof is in the pudding. Every single major city in America that is on the decline has been exclusively ran by leftists for decades. Did you know that Chicago was just named the rat capital of the US for the sixth year in a row? LA, Baltimore, New York City are also breaking into the top 10. Leftist policies aren't working. Take this quarter, go downtown and have a rat gnaw that thing off your face. How can you write an entire op-ed about being sick of politicians using and disrespecting black voters and then go along with it anyways? It's phony, wake up! I just think that you deserve better, that's all. Wow, I feel like today's show was just full of truth bombs, was it not? Gotta end on the biggest one, though. I'm out of business, business, cause I think I should be.
be a potato Disney superstar. I can do singing, dancing, maybe romance, and this potato is gonna miss it. A cute servative named Ella sent that in, and I gotta say, you guys just get it, man. If you like today's show and want more but gotta hop in the car, you can listen to Politics, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and anywhere else you get podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. Don't forget to like this episode. Tell me in the comments if you think being submissive is sexist, and share this episode with two friends who like thought-provoking conversation and weird humor. You know who they are. We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. PM Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. Click below to watch yesterday's episode. Please subscribe, thumbs up, share this video, and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss the conservatee. And make sure you're following this show at Politics on Instagram for even more conservative content.